the Mercedes-Benz E-Class wagon with lineage stretching back to the W123 series cars of the late 1970s has always exuded an understated classicism. It is lower and sleeker than any crossover, yet the E-Wagon boasts an extra measure of practicality over the sedan, making it the perfect vehicle for dropping the progeny at Brown. Although wagon sales in the United States are minuscule, these cars sell in the most desirable zip codes, and buyers of the E-Class wagon are among the most affluent in the Mercedes-Benz family. In Europe, wagons are a much bigger deal, there, one in three E-Class models sold is a wagon, and in the home market of Germany, the wagon accounts for half of all E-Class sales. Mercedes-Benz is edging this model toward crossover territory with the new all-terrain version, but despite the popularity of that genre here, the Outback wagon effectively made Subaru in America, we re supposedly not going to get the all-terrain in the US market. Instead, the latest E-Class wagon, at least at launch, is coming to our market in only one guys, E400 formatic. We are told, unofficially, that the all-conquering E63 model also will return. Take 6. The E400 designation, as opposed to E300, is a tip-off that the wagon forsakes the sedan S2.0 liter turbo four-cylinder, instead, it gets a 3.0 liter twin turbocharged V6. Compared with the naturally aspirated 3.5 liter 6 in the previous E350 wagon, the new twin turbo 3.0 liter produces 27 more horsepower and an additional 81 pounds to foot of torque. More important, the new totals of 329 horsepower and 354 pounds to foot represent 88 more horsepower than the 2.0 liter turbo 4 in the E300 and 81 pounds to foot more torque. With that extra output, you never get the feeling as you sometimes do in the sedan that it could use a little more grunt. The V6 also sounds better, which is a nice bonus, although the wagon generally is a near-silent cruiser, more so if you opt for the acoustic comfort package, with its acoustically insulated laminated glass. The engine is mated to the same 9-speed automatic found in the E300, and although it is mostly well-behaved and snappy enough to downshift when braking into corners in Sport and Sport Plus modes we did experience a few rough 3-4 rough shifts in Sport Plus mode. Frankly, though, we don't imagine most owners will use Sport Plus mode often. Longer and lower. All-wheel drive is standard here as it has been in E-Class wagons for a while. And what is also becoming a B tradition, the wagon, like the sedan, can be had in a choice of two versions, luxury, which gets a chrome mesh grill topped by a hood ornament, and sport, which has a grill featuring a pair of thick horizontal blades and a center-mounted star. The sport version also brings 18-inch wheels, rather than 17s, and a slightly firmer suspension tune. The one we drove was further outfitted with the available air spring adaptive suspension, an option on either model, and it felt just about perfect. The adaptive suspension allows some body motion, but the wagon nest moves are dignified, never sloppy. The steering is creamy but not over boosted, and we found the E400 easy to place in corners not too surprising, given that it is effectively the same size as the sedan. The latest generation wagon sees its proportions change slightly, with shorter overhangs front and rear but a 2.6-inch greater stretch between the axles. It has just over an inch longer than before and 1.3 inches lower. There is more rear seat near room and fractionally more legroom and shoulder room, and the rear seat is comfortable for two adults. And yes, the rear-facing third-row seat kid-sized but still cool returns once again. For thoroughly modern access to that retro third seat, the power rear lift gate now can be opened or closed via a kick motion under the rear bumper. Aside from the V6 powertrain, standard formatic all-wheel drive, and wagon-specific furnishings, the E400 otherwise will mimic the standard and optional equipment offerings of the E300 sedan when it goes on sale in early 2017. That means the same sumptuous interior and the same standard 12.3-inch sensor screen. A second identical size screen in front of the driver is part of the premium 3 package, 
a five-figure option, and it creates a techno-fabulous display that beats even Audi's new virtual cockpit. Getting what you want out of all that technology, though, isn't too easy. With the click wheel controller, the touchpad above it, and the twin touchpads on the steering wheel spokes, there are plenty of ways to manipulate the displays, but the multi-layered system of menus and sub-menus is far from intuitive. The E400S Drive Pilot Semi-Autonomous Driving System, also included with Premium 3, is equally impressive and easier to use. The active cruise control with steering assist allows for up to 60 seconds of hands-free driving before a beep prompts the driver to put a hand on the wheel. If you ignore that warning, the cruise control will switch off, and the car will decelerate. So you can T-ride and back and take videos of the E-Class cruising with an empty driver and seat Mercedes isn't T interested in those stunts but the automated steering is smooth, and the car will even change lanes to execute a pass if you give it the go-ahead via the turn signal. The cars we drove in Europe had a new tech feature, the ability to use one S smartphone as the car key. Although this sounds neat you well, I'll never forget your car keys exclamation mark it as somewhat less cool in practice. Whereas cars equipped with passive entry can detect a key in your pocket or purse and lock or unlock at the touch of the door handle, the smartphone key can t be detected in your pocket. So you need to hold the phone up against the door handle in exactly the right way so the sensor can read it, and do the same again to lock the door and the key has to be sitting in the charge tray in order to start the car. This smartphone car key isn't he coming to the US imminently but might be offered in the future. We say there is no need to rush on that one. One of the few, the very few. No car these days wants to appear behind the times, technologically and there is no danger of that here but modern tech is not what is going to sell the E400. Although there are smaller wagons in the US market the Audi A4 Railroad, the BMW 3 Series, the Volkswagen Golf Sport Wagon, and the Volvo V60 for those who feel that a luxury sport wagon complements their lifestyles, the E400 stands alone, at least until the arrival of the Volvo V90. Looked at within the E-Class Pantheon, the E400 offers added versatility and to our eyes, a sleeker look than the standard E300 sedan, and its twin turbo 6 provides welcome additional grunt and a superior soundtrack to the turbocharged 4-cylinder that powers the E300. At the same time, its mellower suspension tune and more natural steering make it a more relaxed tourer than the Mercedes-AMG E43 sedan, also powered by a twin turbo V6. Sadly, none of this is likely to materially alter the sales equation for the E-Class wagon in the United States, but those few who do seek one out will be getting the sweetest machine in the current E-Class lineup. Line up.